Yes, brother. The electronics may be challenging, but the message is going to go through. We're back once again with Brother Neil Frazier. And he has another powerful, fabulous, um, how can I put it, bar-raising message tonight. And like I said, said, we issues out here in the motherland, they say for three days, but I would say more like five days. And in certain parts, it's still a challenge. I'll just explain it really fast because I want to get into this message. In the Red Sea, there were some international undersea internet cables that somehow got slashed. I'm not saying somebody oh, wow. slashed them because uh, the story is still out. And then when they do tell you something, you don't really know if they are telling you the truth. So this is what they say as far as the story is concerned. Um, I don't know if Brother Neil fell off. Let me just see. let see he fell off, but he'll be back on again. So I'll just continue to explain. This is why I didn't do any shows all week. Because, um, okay, Brother Neil is back. Let me just add him back on in. Yeah, let me, I added you back in, Brother Neil. Okay. Can you hear me? All yeah, right, I yeah. Great. Okay, yeah, so, so it was um, three days, they say, but I would say it was a little more than that. I had my own challenges uh, do, dealing with the things with Google the whole time from uh, the third week in February. And it borders on criminal. So I had to deal with that. And then we came and had to deal with this. But, you know, I had time to upload other things from SoundCloud, other episodes, which the majority of my episodes ever since I started are on SoundCloud. Whatever's missing will be put up. But it was quite tedious to change over files and click and make sure and record. But the work is salvaged. So the uh, desired result for whoever wanted it to be different, they did not win. Anyway, Absolutely. we had the situation here, which I feel was a test run to let us know that they can destroy our communications and it lets us know how much we depend on it. And it reminded me how much I'm dependent on it to a point which I already know, but this is why we should try to live in a way where we don't depend on this thing that they give us so easily. And once we fall into dependence on it, they can control us. So there's certain things I know need to tighten up on with my uh, dealings with the internet. And I'm going to reduce my need for the internet and work around it in different ways, but still be effective with the content. So I have nothing but time to do that. So where the engineered man-made system in America, in the West, all over the world, or who has the Western mentality, I have 24 seven time to do what I need to do to preserve what we're doing here on this platform and any other platform that I'm starting up. So brother Neil, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to pretty much be dealing with the strained signal that I have here. So I'm okay. running everything from the phone and um, I'll be able to up, put the pictures. Just tell me which one I have five of them okay. here for you. I, for some reason I didn't put the cover up, but I will be advertising this on every show. So we're not going to lose any ground that way. So okay. talk to us, brother. And I do want to still have a private conversation with you in detail because we can speak on a higher level. Not that the people or brothers and sisters listening here wouldn't understand, but it was more on a private level to let you know what, what my aim is ahead of the curve for the next three years plus in advance. Because I do think in advance. I'm not just a weekend kind of guy. So, brother, thank you so much for being here. I know this is going to be a good message. And talk to us. Let's, let's, right. let's roll. All right. Well, well, thank you, Brother Lance. That's uh, <clears throat> that gives the explanation for why, you know, you haven't been active because I, you know, and it's good to hear your explanation because, you know, a lot of things run through your mind. You're on a whole nother continent. I, I know the beast mentality. I'm not fooled by that like you're not. So I know what they're capable of doing. And uh, yeah, I agree. It's almost like, you know, a punch shot at you, letting you know, well, hey, I still can pull the plug on you at any time. I still can do, you know, it's a control mechanism like it's always been. But one of the things, as you said, is that we know we must continue to look for alternate ways 
okay, to get around this, because at some point, as always, the truth is going to be too much for the beast to bear. Yes. And so, yeah. And so, you know, with that realization, we continue every opportunity we get, you know, to bring forth truth, to open to light the light uh, and put a spotlight on what is happening to our, to our people in particular. Um, but we know that this is happening to um, all cultures of people. But again, as a black think tank, as a black media guy, you know, it's our obligation to keep our people informed because we know there are things that they're not telling us that we have to find out on our own. So, so with that said, I uh, want to greet you, Brother Lance. It's always good to hear your voice. Um, Thank you. Everyone in the chat room. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a topic uh, that like, you know, like all of our topics, we need to really, really um, talk about and bring out and look at it so we won't be bamboozled and hoodwinked, you know, again, as they move forward with these um, wicked agendas. But I just wanna, before we get into the program, I just wanna, uh, you know, just remind everyone that our children's workbook is uh, now uh, out. You can purchase it. I'm working with a, a company, I have it in PDF form, but apparently there are some loopholes you have to jump through if you're not willing or able to pay a lot of money to get things. I, you know, I'm, I'm like Brother Lance, who I've learned a lot from. I like to uh, do things on my own. That's why sometimes it takes a little longer for things to manifest. But at the end of the day, you feel better because you know you produced it. And then you know the message that you were given is going to... Um, go out there. So today, uh, the topic is from man to machine worship, and that nature is our only way out. And uh, we're, we're going to, I'm going to use uh, three of the uh, curriculums uh, from the book. Okay, three of the subjects, I'm sorry. And uh, from the curriculum of the academy um, with as visuals today so that we can get a little deeper into why now we must teach our children, okay? Sometimes we forget about this, um, but they are fighting a bigger warfare than we have fought, okay? Because each generation the warfare as they learn more ways to actually um, come at us and weaponize these ways that they use, they're focusing on them now. There are a lot of ways. One of the things that I've learned, and unfortunately it's our own people sometimes that you have to be um, cautious of with information, is that I don't put out everything now that's going on with me or what the academy is doing or how we plan to combat a lot of the things that are targeted directly at our people. Um, so we're going to cover uh, seven important areas. Uh, the first one is going to be the spring equinox. We're going to talk about how we are out of alignment with nature. We're also going to talk about what spring symbolizes, the feminine energy, the creatrix energy, okay? And we're also going to talk about the cosmic and natural forces, again, from the real creator in the universe and why we must go back to this, you know, like we were in the beginning. Um, Secondly, we're going to talk about the real war for heaven, not the war in heaven. We're going to talk about the real war for heaven, which is our economic survival. We're going to discuss a little bit 
about Babylon and the part that it plays and has always played in this. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to use uh, some, some uh, scriptural references in order, you know, let's face it, man, we, we're dealing with reality here. 90% of our people, okay, are religious. To overlook this would be a serious mistake. Although I don't agree with a lot of it, nature teaches us in our own bodies that we extract what we need, the nutrients, whatever we need for our bodies, and then we eliminate um, what we don't need. And, and this is the process that we have to use um, when we're dealing with religion, because again, um, our, our etheric spirit and heart and body can't be touched, but they can touch you psychologically. And these are the ways in which we must combat this. So we're gonna talk about the Sodom and Gomorrah effect, okay? And, and the uh, war against divine and natural laws. We're gonna discuss the Haitian revolution how important that is to us even today, what's going on in Haiti and why um, this is so very important to black people because this is a energy vortex that has reopened for a reason. And we're gonna look at how one of the uh, wealthiest or the first wealthiest uh, colony in the Western Hemisphere became the poorest. And we're going to talk about the politics surrounding that. And then we're also going to talk about the great victory that has great significance for our people in Haiti, or Haiti, or Saint-Domingue. And we're going to talk about how this has great significance to us and how our people relied on nature in order to defeat the greatest European armies of that day. Uh, also, we're gonna talk about um, the fact that uh, our countries, mainly in the motherland, had to pay reparations as well as Haiti back to their former colonial powers, such as Ghana had to pay reparations um, Togo, <coughs> an interesting thing happened in Togo where they made the French wealthy off of their uh, coffee and cocoa. And when they drove them out, they destroyed the manufacturing facilities in Togo where to the Togoans had to now produce this same coffee and cocoa uh, through the French government and uh, who became wealthy from this process. We're gonna, the third thing we wanna talk about is the makings of you. Ha, have you met your real self? Okay. Whose image are you made in? This is extremely important how you view whose image you're made in. Um, again, we're going to talk about uh, the attack against the creative spirit and the feminine energy and why that is so very important uh, with, to the spring equinox and nature itself. Uh, and we're going to talk about the importance of values. Who sets the standards that you live by? Okay, and, and one of the things about this, I'll just mention briefly is that um, <clears throat> it is impossible. And, and I know people don't like to use the word impossible, but I'm using it more for effect right now. But um, let me say it another way, because I, I know um, our, our people, when we interpret things, we, we, we are interpreting it based on a Eurocentric way of thinking. So let me say it another way. Uh, the importance of values and the standards that we live by have to be set by us. I'll give you an example. 
all of the major corporations here, and, and I always I remember I read the story of uh, Henry Ford. Um, they started out as horse and buggy or carts. But our people are taught that you have to have these big buildings like these mega churches or these huge corporations that we could never afford to purchase because of bias and lending, okay, and capital. And so when, when this uh, incident that came around a few years ago that leveled the playing field where a lot of retail outlets had to close and people had to begin to um, you know, do business from home or in the streets or wherever they could do it, it actually turned out to be a good thing because we learned that we could survive without that. But the point I want to make is that these standards, like when people look at the academy, well, the, well, the first thing they teach our people is, well, that's not a school. He doesn't have a building anywhere. And, and this, is, this is why it's so important. This is why, again, as I always say, our griots taught us outside in nature, under trees, okay, or by water, okay? Because you being stuck on the fact that you have to have some kind of building, okay, comes directly from the fact that the individuals that stole 99% of the resources in the world, they are able to construct these massive uh, buildings. But by you wanting to be like them or worshiping a man, then your standards is based on their standards. And, and that's a huge problem for us moving forward. Okay, but the point I, I was trying to make is um, you know, one thing I learned from Latino and uh, Chinese people here is th they have like little storefront markets or they have the trucks or what have you, and they're thriving businesses. But you feel like you have to have some kind of building to impress these um, people with a God complex or to impress each other in order for you to be effective. The academy is very effective. Um, you know, I meet people all the time, thanks to Lance, and, uh, um, you know, the academy's name getting out there. Um, I meet people all the time, um, incredibly. Um, their children are, you know, sharing nature with them and their mindsets are, are being turned back. So that those are the things that are important to me. Um, and, you know, Whereas in today's market, you don't need um, a physical building to, to actually put forth your purpose. So don't let anyone stop you because you don't have the standards and values that have been set before you that uh, I, I'll, I'll put almost in front of it, almost impossible for you to meet for various reasons. But your purpose is the greatest thing on this planet. Um, and then the, the last couple of things we're going to talk about is uh, we're going to talk about the fact that you are led by the tree of death and not the tree of life. And this is based on the corruption of divine laws. We're going to touch on that today. And uh, just to add a little satire in the end, uh, we're going to talk about vampirism. The legend of uh, Vlad the Impaler. Uh, we're going to talk about blood on your lips and bite marks on our necks and the bloodlines of your deities. Because, see, uh, our people have been taught this romanticized fantasy about Christianity where you have uh, this timid looking, blue eyed, blonde haired individual that you romanticize about, okay? But in reality, when you look back at say Vlad the Impaler, okay,
who was, uh, they fought Christian wars, wars. Christianity was primarily a military and political juggernaut. It was not what you have been taught, okay? It was not this genteel, uh, you know, love everyone, kumbaya with everyone, religion that you have taught, no. They, they kill millions of people. So we're gonna discuss that as well. And then we're gonna talk about Blackula. <laughs> we're gonna talk about the seeds of self uh, betrayal. Some of you, uh, that's uh you know within my age range over the, and within the last 20 25 years you know about blackula that was played by uh i think his name was william marshall um and so we'll talk a little bit about that but lance if you would put up the um first visual where the nature's language with the um the sheep the butterfly uh the two people no not that one <laughs> The two people is from the academies of, yes, that's it. That's it right there. So uh, we're, we're gonna, yes, yes. So you can just leave that up um, uh, be before we actually start talking about this. I wanted to kind of uh, lead into this a little bit because this is extremely important. And I wanted to start sharing um, the Academy's curriculum. Now, this is in the children's book. As I said, you know, many of you, you're not going to go back to nature. Let's just face the facts. So let's invest our time, energy, and funds into the development of our children. The majority of what you need to accomplish your purpose in life you learn before the age of five, okay? And uh, I'll say something real interesting about this is that for years I searched and I looked and I said, I know that nature has a language. And I just couldn't, I just couldn't get a breakthrough. It's like, I know that nature has a language. And one day I've spent many days at the park just looking at butterflies, looking at different things and saying, I know that nature has a language. <laughs> and one day I'm going to conceptualize that language for our children because this will open, okay, their pineal gland and allow them to connect with their true source of wisdom and knowledge. <clears throat> but um, the, the current language that we uh, operate off is a language of deception. I'll give you an example here where, <clears throat> for instance, they call people who are creators, like Lance, they call them content creators or YouTubers versus philosophers. Now, why? Why wouldn't they call somebody as intelligent as Lance and ha has had as much experience in the world as him? Why would they not say he's a philosopher? I'll tell you why. Because philosophers create uh, concepts, not content, concepts. And these concepts, a, a philosopher is someone who studies or writes about the real meaning of life. So there may be some individuals who are content creators or YouTubers, but again, we have been taught to put everybody in the categories of the people who set the standards and values by which we live by. No, there are, there are a lot of our people who are philosophers, okay? But because they're classified based on machine language or AI, then we follow the, those narratives. But we live in a world that worships men. And this, this worship takes on many forms. Primarily, it takes on a type of deity worship. 
that is based on pseudo intelligence. This deity type worship in America is multifaceted. Okay, and it focuses on material worship and the exaltation of men and women. Um, this form of worship is artificially based and the antithesis of natural worship. Man has successfully replaced our worship of natural phenomena with all eyes on him. And the two main vehicles that have been used to accomplish this has been education and religion. And both of these institutions uh, indoctrinate us to look to man as the ultimate source of wisdom and knowledge. And as a result of this, we seek, cease to look to the real source of our wisdom and existence. Because of this, our values and standards that we live by are established according to a demonic force that is diametrically opposed to your real creator. We, we, we have been taught by this uh, system that worship men, that valuing diamonds and golds over the lives of indigenous people is more important. And these wicked forces have created a vice grip on the black community and have given us a value system, okay, that's based on fiat or paper that has no intrinsic value. The reason for the complete dependence on these values at the core is because we have turned our backs on the real creator creatrix of the universe. But moving forward, we must turn back to our natural selves or continue to suffer the consequences, which is natural karma. And I believe wholeheartedly that the current state of black America is directly related to this, our failure to do this. So I wanna ask these questions. Did man put the sun and stars in the universe? Did he create the animals, birds, plants, trees, or the human brain? No, but what he did was he gave you a false value system based on narratives that he created that has caused the complete destruction of black civilization. And finally, he has transferred this godless system into the machines that have completely complete control over your lives. Instead of living for your purpose, like you were born to do, you live for celebrity status, attention seeking, a false sense of success, Gucci bags, fiat, and money over everything and any, everybody else. And instead of natural downloads from your natural intelligent quotient, you depend on artificial uploads that <clears throat> have tricked you to believe that you are operating according to divine laws. So this, this particular language that we're looking at, I'm going to read for you. And this is very important to, ch to share with the children. Keep in mind, okay, that this is a nature workbook for our children. This, ha this has nothing to do with any religion, okay, at all. Do not interject religion into this but allow their young minds to be impacted by natural things. You can take them out to where there's water. I, I recommend when you use the book, take them out to where there's water or where there are trees or somewhere where their minds can now um, cut off those devices, take the book with you and where their minds can now get the full effect of nature. So here's nature's language that I created in the academy for our children. 
First, you see the sheep. Then you see the snake. You see the woman and man. You see the spider. You see the butterfly. And then you see the parasite. So this language is saying that following poisonous people. So the sheep represents, the sheep is a follower. The snake we're using in one of its characteristics as a venomous um, um, snake. Okay, not as, you know, in many ancient cultures, we knew or we know that the snake has been revered, okay, as is a deity. Even it's used in the uh, medical symbology that we see today. But in this form, we're going to use it in terms of the venom that can literally, that is literally fatal. And then we have the woman and the man to um, represent people, okay? So following poisonous people will keep you in a web of deception. This is why the spider is there. One of the things that we need to teach our young people, okay, without injecting negative energy into it, is that, okay, everybody does not have your best interests at heart. This lesson has to be taught because as I continue to look at the statistics, of our children that are being um, taken, um, it gets higher every year. So someone is uh, fooling our children simply because we have not warned them about the wickedness that exists in this world. And it's up to us to do that. And one of the best ways to do that is talk to them about the spider that the spider uses a web of deception to capture its prey. This is nature. So <clears throat> this will open their eyes to that and to help them navigate through a lot of things to save them a lot of heartache. However, nature always has a solution. So in order to change, okay, which we see through metamorphosis, where a caterpillar goes into a cocoon and completely becomes a whole new organism, okay? Comes out of that cocoon and is birthed like the spring equinox into a whole new world or higher consciousness or heaven, which you, you know. So, we see that this process in nature is very important and we need to explain this to our young people. So the definition of metamorphosis is the transformation of a living organism from one state of existence, the caterpillar, to a butterfly, to another, okay, either by natural or supernatural means. Um, so the butterfly represents, in order to change and raise your higher consciousness, you must avoid parasites. Now, what is a parasite? A parasite <clears throat> is an organism that attaches itself to a host. It feeds off this host. It lives off this host. It sucks all of the blood from this host, and it sucks all of the energy, like an energy vampire, from this host, okay? This is sort of what has happened to our people. Not sort of. This is what has happened to our people. If you look at any um, era of history, going back to antiquity, and even to this day, Okay, we have had a parasitic type relationship with the people who have sucked everything, not only from our lands, but also from us in order to survive and then refuse, okay, to do anything to compensate you for that. But now 
by spitting in your face and, and putting salt in the wound like they used to do when they split your back open with the whips. Although you worked in the fields for 16 hours and produced the greatest wealth this world has ever known, then this is the compensation that you get. Now, again, I'm talking to adults while we're looking at, I don't want anybody to get this wrong. We're not gonna talk to the children about this. I'm just, um, you know, showing you what the relationship that we've had. But when we we're talking to the children, of course, we're not gonna talk about this, okay? So, um, okay, Brother Lance, thanks. You can, you can remove that. Um, we, we, we wanna talk about the spring equinox. And the visual that I wanna put up there, Brother Lance, is the, um, the, net, the cosmic and natural forces that's written out. <clears throat> I hope you can still hear me. I don't know if you can. I know you've been having some challenges with that. Um, but, but we'll continue. Um, let's talk about the spring equinox um, and why we are out of alignment with nature. So what does spring represent to us? Spring represents to us a renewal, a beginning, okay, possibilities, okay, overcoming, okay. This is what the spring equinox or the vernal equinox means to us. There are only two times that um, this happens. It's in the spring and in the autumn. Okay, so we have a spring and a fall equinox, okay, where there's an equal amount of uh, nighttime. Okay, so when I think about the spring equinox and you look at nature and you see everything budding and opening and you see the, the different activity with the uh, with the different insects and the birds and the plants, and you just see nature come alive. And when you think about it, you look at the birth, the birthing process. You look at how, when that umbilical cord is cut, okay, and all human beings had a, an umbilical cord attached to them. If they did not, they are not natural human beings, okay? So let's get that straight. And, and this is why the spring, the feminine energy, and, uh, the creatrix energy, uh, and the birthing process is so very important to us. This is why there's an attack on this energy. This is why they want to turn our little girls into boys. But the primary reason for this is that the evil forces that are behind this, that are opposed to divine laws, um, they know that if they can cut the feminine energy, okay, then they can actually try to um, affect the ways in which that energy um, brings forth or manifests uh, things in nature. So when you have the electromagnetic spectrum, the two great forces uh, in the universe and on the planet, then you have the masculine or or solar or electro energy. And then you have the feminine, the magnetism, the magnetic uh, energy. And as soon as Lance puts that, that cosmic and natural forces up, I'll go into that a little deeper to explain that. Maybe we will we'll have to come back to that. Um, but yes, springtime is a time when you know, you should be out in nature, have our children out in nature, 
get away from these devices, um, get them out of the houses in front of these, um, <laughs> you know, I don't even know what to call them now because I know that, that they go both ways, not just us watching them, they're watching us as well. So get our children out walking, okay? Get them uh, away from McDonald's, take them to uh, a place that has uh, fruit. Okay, get them off of these sugar products that they have in our community. Now is the time, springtime is the time for you to manifest the things in nature that will help you move forward. So the second area we're gonna talk about is the real war for heaven. Okay, not the war in heaven, but the real war for heaven, which is economic survival. And we're gonna talk about uh, the spirit of Babylon Sodom and Gomorrah in the war against divine and natural laws. So <clears throat> what the first thing that um, happens as a result of you going from a man to machine worship is that the Babylonian, Babylonian system that we live under, or the feudalism system that we live under, um, continues to upload you with chasing fiat every single day. And this, this is deliberately done because it, take, <coughs> it takes you away from your mission and purpose in life. <clears throat> and it seeks to compensate you for turning your back on nature. This we can see, and how they do our young people in the in the um, different areas that they're in, particularly in music, where they reward the ones who are destroying the fiber of the black community, even though they're black. Um, <clears throat> they reward them, and then our young conscious um, brothers. I was watching uh, the story they were doing on Meek Mill about prison reform. They strike at them like they have always done us to keep them from, you know, putting positive energy, frequency, and vibrations into our young people because they still use these systems, okay, to exploit our people. Um, the other thing that they're doing, I, I mentioned this earlier about the Sodom and Gomorrah effect. Um, you know, ba based on the story, I know a lot of our people, like I said earlier, are religious. So we're not going to dance around that. You'll be able to comprehend and interpret what I'm saying. So I'm going to use this story that when the angels went there, the men of the city went out, you know, looking to try to hook up with the angels. And that, <clears throat> you know, this spirit that exists where they want to put our children, our boys in the same bathrooms with girls, they want to put dresses on them. They want to infeminize them. Where do they learn this from? So these celebrities and people that you worship, they put them in dresses to make our young people and our young children in particular desensitized to this. But we, we are speaking out against this today in the energy of the spring equinox that we will not sit back and let you destroy our young people and our children in particular by you um, destroying our creatrix energy. Um, so let's talk about this real war for heaven, this economic survival, um, and this uh, war against divine and natural laws. And we're going to talk about the Haitian Revolution, okay? Because the Haitian Revolution 
is so very, very, very important to black people, sun people all over the planet. Because there are several things that um, developed as a result. That's why you see the Haitian energy back now um, before the world. And one of the reasons for this is because the um, people that oppressed us, as always, they carry this petty jealousy, okay, for centuries against our people. Because Haiti, or Saint-Domingue, was the first nation established by former slaves. A brilliant man, Louis uh, Toussaint Overture, okay, was one of the driving forces behind this, but it was the creatrix energy, the females, that have always been at the forefront, okay, of the black struggle. They are the real power behind the throne, okay? And this is the primary reason why they have put this wedge between um, our women and our men you know, for other reasons as well, but this is the primary reason. But the Haitian Revolution was fought between 1791 and 1804, which they, they gained their independence in 1804. But here's, here's one of the most asinine things that exists in our world that continue to exist to this day and why the people that perpetrate this system upon sun people are opposed to divine laws and the true creator of the universe. This is why. Um, our people in Haiti fought valiantly by using nature, okay, to overcome the weapons of the three greatest uh, European military armies of that day, the British, the French, and also uh, the British, the French, and the Spanish, okay? But after their independence, King Charles X sent an armed flotilla of warships and soldiers to Haiti. Now, mind you, <coughs> Haiti, <coughs> as I said earlier, was the wealthiest, let me say that again, the wealthiest place in the Western Hemisphere, okay? And it was that way because of the, uh, the sugar and coffee plantations that produce tremendous wealth for the French. Now, how did they go from the wealthiest to the poorest today? And this is directly the reason why Haiti is in the condition it is in today. So after uh, King Charles X sent this flotilla of warships to Haiti, to force the newly formed government to pay French, the French government reparations. Now think about this. You don't want to pay our people reparations in America who actually did the backbreaking work, but you want to pay, you are forcing our people who created this tremendous wealth for you that you still enjoy today you're going to make them pay reparations for gaining their independence. So anybody, even Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles can see the problem with this. Okay. But let's go on. They sent these warships to force the newly formed government to pay French government reparations. A hundred and fifty million francs 
which is equivalent to 20 to $30 billion in today's economy. That is 10 times the amount it cost the US to buy Louisiana from the French, which doubled the size of America. Uh, so Haiti, which was known at the time as Saint Do Do Dominique, okay, provided the greatest wealth for France through coffee and sugar plantations, even under the most inhumane and brutal treatment and conditions. But once that Haiti uh, gained their independence, they had to borrow or take out loans from the same imperialists that had them in slavery. They had to borrow this money. They had to take out loans from French banks with an unimaginable interest rates. Okay, they had to borrow this money in order to pay them reparations. Okay. Now, these were, again, the same imperialists that held them in bondage for centuries. And um, the Haitian government and its people were decimated by this. It actually uh, took them 120 years to repay these reparations debt, okay? And so <clears throat> this is how they went from the richest nation in the world, okay, to the poorest. Um, and as I said, you know, this was a, uh, this was something that did not come at a small price. And that, you know, they, well, here, here's some of the, the, um, the seeds of that time, just like Babylon. Um, one, of the, one of the most enduring things that um, still exists in most islands, uh, not just Haiti, um, today, um, where our people, our women were forcibly raped um, there was over a hundred different um, codes of color that were created in Haiti. Now imagine this, okay, from the extreme light, and these were mulatto classes, okay, the same thing they did with slavery here in the Willie Lynch theory. They went from extreme light to light to, uh, you know, middle light, dark, I mean, some of these things are just crazy. So for when you hear somebody say, I don't see color, um, you, you're lying to yourself, okay? You, you haven't met your real self because this system, global system that was established by Europeans, at the root of it was color. It still is. And all of the um, nations and continents that you go to this is at the root, okay, like uh, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing said, that the, um, the keys to the 20th century is the color line, keys, okay? And if you want to pretend that it's not, all you have to do is look at the fact that Haitian refugees, uh, I'm sorry, Haitian migrants are called refugees and they're turned back. And let's be real about this simply because they are dark skinned people. Okay, so what happened at during this time um, that Haiti um, gained their independence? Our people were very proud um, and they fought like hell to gain their independence. They paid a heavy price, still are today. Uh, the American president, Thomas Jefferson, <coughs> sought to destroy Haiti because of their new independence from its former colonial powers. And again, you know, the European powers, they stuck together. This is how you could have 8% of the world's population 
in control of the other 92% of people of color. It's because they penalize, much like they do us today when we talk truth, or they shadow ban channels like Lance, <clears throat> or a lot of our family in the chat room who are, are fighting against this uh, beast mentality um, are penalized. Okay, like myself, they, you know, they penalize you for this. And it's, it's a childish type behavior because the American president, Thomas Jefferson, really, he was a slave owner himself. And these, these are some of the reasons behind why they demonize things like CRT, which only means that they don't want to teach real history or real black history or the real history that they perpetrated on black people lands <coughs> or they attack anytime we use a word to uplift ourselves and our conscious they attack like woke the, when when they use and they even have our our own people uh, that I call blackulas um coons um regurgitate the only way that anyone the color of you and I can excel in this country is if they do two things, maybe three. First, they have to deny who they are. They have to deny that they are the primordial seed of the planet and the universe and that they are children of the sun and that nature is our greatest teacher, not man and, and the false God and deities that we have been forced to worship. That's the first thing. The second thing is you have to wholeheartedly claim this religious uh, fervor and religion, okay, that forces you to worship for a false deity and gods that, or I should say men who have a uh, God complex. That's the second thing. Uh, you have to do it. Not only that, you have to regurgitate all of the narratives that support that way of life. And thirdly, you have to be willing to uh, denigrate your own people, to slander them, to um, a, a form of self-hate almost. This has to be your MO. These three things have to exist in you in order for you. And, and this is where the schism comes in with our people is because our people know that you will never get the attention, the fiat, or anything from these people if you don't worship them and if you don't destroy your own brothers and sisters. Our people know this. And so this is why uh, they come after people like me and Lance and people in the chat room and other people who are out here, other platforms that are speaking truth um, about our people and what's really going on with our people. Um, and like I said, it's a childish type behavior because anyone that really um, serves, okay, let's just use the terminology of God and lives according to the attributes or the fruits of the spirit, so they say, which we know are not the fruits of the spirit. <coughs> okay. We know that there are more like the seven deadly sins. How could you, how could you speak one thing that you read out of your narratives, but your behavior shows something, the spirit of it shows something totally different. Okay. But going back to Haiti, um, this is why we find Haiti in the condition today. They have never forgotten. Okay, just like when they attack you, they use our own people to try to attack whatever mistakes you've made in the past. Um, but yet they tell you to kumbaya. First of all, man doesn't have the right to tell someone whether or not they have a second chance in life, whether or not they can change from um, one way of thinking or living to another, 
You have the right to elevate yourself. You don't have to go through anybody's standards or values to do that. And that's why only going back to nature will allow you to do that because it will disconnect you from now your machine Google worship, your new God and your new deity. Okay. So <clears throat> we see that our people have always had to pay reparations. Okay. This is why when they lie to people before they come to this country and show them the, the movies about our bad 10% that exists in all cultures and talk about us, they don't tell them that we built the, we the wealth in the Western world. They don't tell them that our people work from sun up to sundown. They don't tell them that they uh, slash their backs open with the whip. whip. They don't tell them um, how they raped and murdered our people. In fact, the first 15 years that Christopher Colon was here, after t the Tianos helped them survive, and they all were dying, and they put them in the gold mines. Okay, they killed a million people um, in 15 years. Imagine that. Okay. So there is no, we're not, we're not going for this anymore. Okay. We're just not. Our, our people are in a serious condition. Um, I was looking at a story today. We're, and not just us, all Americans, that <clears throat> this corporation, I'm not going to say their name here on NASA's channel, where um, this corporation just uh, fired, I, I don't know how many hundreds of people, it was uh, over a thousand people, and hired uh, migrants that they can pay a third of what they were paying these people in this small town um, where, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure that, that these people were depending on that industry as one of the major corporations in America um, in order to feed their families and to live the quote unquote American dream. Um, so, <clears throat> No matter what they say about our people, um, we have we have the records. We know the achievement of our achievements of our people, the uh, inventions that our people um, created that move America from being a third world country, okay, to actually a leading. Uh, economic power in the world. We know this. We we look at, I did a video about the billions of dollars that are still being created after centuries of, of the inventions that our people created, yet have, no, just on that alone, uh, we should be getting some type of residual payments from so you want our people to play fair in, our, in your system when you don't play by the same rules that you've established for our people. And then on top of that, you want to continue to hold our people down when we have been your most and continue to be your most loyal supporters and have fought in all of your wars. I was looking again the other day at the Buffalo Soldiers that protected white people and also protected the uh, so-called uh, <clears throat> five uh, tribes, civilized tribes, whatever that means, from other um, people that were attacking them. <clears throat> 33,000 of our uh, brave Buffalo soldiers um, died during this time. The other thing that they don't want to talk about is um, there are a couple of regiments, I think it was the 9th and the 10th, Not, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it was Moses Williams and, the, and uh, Emmanuel Stances and, uh, and a lot more of the guys from the 9th uh, regiment 
has as the highest medal of honor um, uh, recipients. Okay, well, the, the highest uh, military award. Okay, uh, recipients of any regiment in military history. I think it was something like 14 of them. I'm not sure exactly, but I do know that they uh, do have the highest. So our people have always sacrificed for this country. You know, and I hear people say, um, well, you know, I'm a patriot and this is my country and waving flags. Let me tell you something. America has always been and always will be the home of black folks, okay? Always will be, just like any other continent uh, in the world. We have always been the first people, the indigenous people on all lands, okay, throughout the planet. So it makes no sense, well, it does make sense to the people who perpetrate these crimes upon our people and continue to do it. But um, it's not like we're just going to lay back and let you continue to, you know, to stick a knife in our stomach and in our hearts when our people have, have made the greatest sacrifice of any people that um, have ever existed in, in Turtle Island, okay, and in Kibalong, okay. Um, let's talk about the makings of you. Are you back yet, brother? Not sure. Maybe um, um, the forces are, are working against you again. But let's talk about, um, and that's fine. I, I want people to look at the nature language, again, that comes from the curriculum of the academy for our young children that's in our book that you can purchase uh, from blurb.com. Um, so uh, <clears throat> Lance has the link. I'm sure we'll put it up at the end of the show. If not, um, you know, you just go to blurb.com, type in Neil Frazier Children's Nature Book Graphic the Academy of Nature or Workbook for Children. And, yes, uh, I'll make sure to put it in after the show oh, okay. um, because I'm working everything through the phone right now. So when I get okay. the info again, I'll put okay. it up in, on the site and everywhere else. I'll make it very easy. Oh, okay, brother. I thought they had knocked you out, but I know you're a fighter. Oh, no, no, no. no. I'm right here. I'm listening oh. intently. Can you do me a favor? I want to go back to something to point out. Uh, the one with the, with the uh, cosmic and natural, it's written out. Okay, let me see. Okay, the cause of the that forces. Yes, that's it. That's it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I want to go back to this because I was talking about how important it is for, for us to teach our children about nature. And you see there at the bottom, the creatrix creator. I know a lot of, a lot of men have issues with that, but again, we, we have to walk in truth, okay? That's our only way out. Um, and that the electromagnetic spectrum represents this, okay? So <clears throat> I wanna talk about the um, cosmic and natural forces of nature and why this is so important for us to teach to our children. Now, let's talk about these two great forces the electromagnetism or the cre creator creatrix spirit. Electro gives us light, gives us heat, gives us fire, and gives us a solar sun. It also um, gives us vitamin D. It gives, it's uh, the source of life. It, it gives uh, nutrients to the earth, and it's also a germinator, okay? And uh, finally, this creator, 
And the electro energy or the masculine energy gives us seeds, which are the containers of genetic codes, our DNA. It gives us our root or it combines with the uh, feminine energy to give us our roots. And most of all, it sets your purpose before you. Now, I was talking about earlier why we have this attack on the creatrix, creatrix energy, the spring equinox, uh, and the uh, feminine energy that is so very important because of the divine law of polarity, okay, and the law of opposites that we see throughout the universe and on the planet that we do not allow this evil, wicked system. And I applaud our brothers in the motherland for rejecting this filth that they're trying to use fiat with. And, and I applaud them for having the strength to stand up for that. Because the feminine energy is so important to our existence that if we allow our little girls to be destroyed by this evil filth, we're gonna pay a heavy price. More importantly, if we allow our little boys to be destroyed by this. So we have to fight back. I don't care, they don't like it. I know you're gonna come after me and Lance for putting this out. I don't care, okay? Um, we, we have to stand up to this. We cannot allow this to continue and we're not saying that we, in any hate energy, that we have any hate towards anybody who has this way of thinking and living. That's not for me to judge. But what is for me to judge is when you are trying to force this down the throats of our children. We say, no, we're going to stop you in your tracks. So let's talk about the creatrix energy that's so very, very important. The magnetism, okay, the magnetic force. Uh, the moon, the lunar energy controls the oceans, the rivers, and the water on the planet. It's an influencer. And so uh, if you allow this energy, I remember hearing uh, Dr. Jewel Pukram well, I credit with opening my eyes about the creatrix energy. I heard her say one time that um, if you go into a room full of men and that creatrix energy is not there, it's cold, it's not, you know, productive in the sense that there <clears throat> is no real um, energy there, okay? But as soon as that feminine energy walks in that room, it changes the whole complexity of that room, okay? And, and that energy, we cannot allow to be destroyed. It is the major influencer, not only in our lives, but on the planet. <coughs> it's also a connector, okay? It connects us to source energy. It connects us to nature, and this is why you see the spring equinox, okay, because everything is budding. The trees, the plants, as I said earlier, the insects. You see insects you ain't seen all year coming out. The birds chirping, singing praises to the creator, creatrix spirit, okay? It's also a conductor or a conduit where that that energy flows, okay, throughout nature. We see it everywhere. It's organic. You see it through the fertile soil. If a, if a woman every 28 days, I mean, when a woman every 28 days produces that egg, okay, and you don't ferminate that egg, it's not considered fertile soil for that particular month, okay? It is fertile soil, but you have not planted in fertile soil. 
for that month. Let me put it that way, because it's always fertile soil. And, and this is how you see the connection with us and you see it in nature. It's natural, it's not artificial, okay? It's not inorganic, it's organic. It's germination, nothing can germinate without this energy, okay? It's also um, <clears throat> artificial, as I mentioned, but the, the last uh, characteristic is, is that it's water. It's H2O. It's the primary nutrient in our bodies, water. It is what three-fourths of the planet is um, consists of. It's a refresher. When it rains, the atmosphere is refreshed. And it's also nourishment. Okay, it nourishes the planet, it nourishes the plants, the trees, the animals need it, and it nourishes us. Okay, so um, the the before I go into the next one, brother, if you could put up the divine laws or the tree of life there. You see that tree, that tree with the um, divine laws there? Brother Lance, you there? No, I was muted for a second. You want me oh, to switch okay. it up for you? Yeah, the um, one with the tree and the divine laws. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, All right. perfect. Perfect. Thank you, brother. Um, so no problem. When we talk about the makings of you, and have you met your real self yet? Whose image are you made in? Okay. So we're going to look at this today. That you are led by the tree of death. Not the tree of life. Okay. Um, you, you are, this is the corruption of divine laws. And that's how we find ourselves moving from worshiping a man. Now to worshiping a machine or, or software, however you want to look at bots, algorithms. So we see this transfer now of the same people who have held us in this vice grip that input this data into bots and algorithms that keep you under the influence of the tree of death. And let's, let's look at this. <clears throat> Lance, I, I know you remember this uh, announcer, very energetic guy, New York sports announcer. Let's go to the videotape. Or he, he might have been just a, a guy who, uh, you know, worked on TV, but he was very energetic. And, uh, you know, he, 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 he actually made you more interested in what the topic was. But... As I said, you are led by the tree of death, not by the tree of life. One of the things that has been done to you is you were given a narrative. This was another way that they attack um, the creatrix or feminine energy, that you were given a apple that supposedly opened your eyes <laughs> to nature that you were not supposed to have. <laughs> that the woman gave it to you. And because of this, that the woman is cursed in her womb, in her childbearing, or, or whatever nonsense you were told. But um, that <clears throat> they actually um, got this, plagiarized this, and I've showed this picture before from the Book and Stones, the goddess Shashat, which she was giving... Um, a fruit to the pharaoh or the king, you know, emphasizing that this fruit from the creator is showing that we have faith in your ability to lead our world and our nation. It was a positive sign. It was not a negative connotation that has been used through religion and the tree of death to put this unfair burden on women, okay? 
So let's look at the tree of life first and the divine laws and why this is the only way out for us. Okay, and then we're going to look at and contrast the tree of death that you currently live by. The first law is the divine law of oneness, and that all energy, all source energy, or the collective consciousness, um, some people like to refer to it as the Akashic Records. That might be a term more familiar with people. Um, I, I call it the collective consciousness or the etheric mind. And the etheric spirit, that all energy is connected. The principle um, that is attached to this divine law is that um, there is a collective consciousness. On um, the next law, we're going to look at the law of polarity, where we look at the electromagnetic force in the universe and on the planet. Um, this is uh, the law of opposites male, female, up, down, right or wrong, left, right. So this law exists throughout our existence. And anytime you go against the principles attached to these laws, there is a divine karma, okay? Not no sin that you committed, okay? When you go against divine principles and laws, there is a natural consequence to this. And this is why I made the statement in one of the videos is that when you violate divine laws, there is a natural karma that comes as a result. And you can still be a Bible quoting, Bible, I mean, scripture quoting, Bible toting, church attending individual, and still be violating divine laws. Okay, the next, uh, <clears throat> so the, the principle attached with the law of polarity is that everything has two manifestations or the caterpillar butterfly effect. In fact, you couldn't have a butterfly without a caterpillar. So this is, you see, even in nature, we're connected at that level. Okay, um, the next law we're going to look at is germination and manifestation, the three elements of life, sun, vitamin D, water, H2O, and fertile soil, which allows the seeds to um, put down roots and germinate. And more importantly is the manifestation that comes as a result of the germination. Now, uh, one of the things too that we have to recognize is that the seeds will germinate rather they're positive or negative. I mean, the seeds will manifest, okay? And this is why it's so important with the energy that you spend your time around, okay? And, and I like to say you can't have butterfly conversations with caterpillar people. You have to, the older I get, I recognize the importance of this. You can't tell everybody what you're doing and what you're planning on doing, okay? You just can't do that. Particularly if you're a butterfly, you cannot, okay? So we have to now begin to use some wisdom as we see that the attacks on our people have increased. They're, they're um, hitting us economically. They're hitting us in a lot of different ways. So, so now we have to use wisdom. Knowledge is good, but knowledge can't help you, okay? In fact, I would dare to say that I'd rather somebody have, who has experience than knowledge <clears throat> because knowledge is just having uh, the awareness of something, but that awareness does not translate into positive manifestation. Sometimes it translates into fear where this, they use this tactic of fear and intimidation against our people, much like, uh, you know, they've done throughout their history against our people. Okay, with the Knight Riders or the, um, the slave catchers or the modern day police. 
um, they, they continue to use these tactics against our people, these fear and intimidation tactics to silence us. Okay, but we know that we have to stand on divine laws and principles and go back to nature teaching us in order to overcome. We can't fight them, okay, with what they have 99% of the resources in the world. <coughs> They'll always use that against you. They'll always bring in other people outside of your culture like they do <clears throat> when they put people from other cultures against black people. They will always do this. <clears throat> so black people have to be smart now. You may not always like what I do or say or what Lance does or say or other black people you know, but you at least got to li listen. We have to be more tolerant of each other so that we can discuss things and then have the proper manifestation, all right? <clears throat> And the principle that goes uh, with this law of germination and manifestation is that you must have people giving you sunshine, water, and you must plant it in fertile soil. So I, I'm really fortunate to have uh, uh, Brother Lance and people in the chat room, the family, <clears throat> Okay, like uh, Indigo King and a few of the other people. Um, I really don't like to call those names because you're gonna always omit someone. But the fact of the matter is you gotta have people putting sunshine into your life and you gotta have people um, watering your life. Okay, like I was saying, I'm very fortunate to have Brother Lance um, putting sunshine into my life. Um, but one of the things that you must do, it's okay to take constructive criticism, but if you constantly have somebody attacking you, okay, and we all have flaws, character flaws, but if, if they're constantly attacking you, your character flaws, then you know that this person is not a part of the sunshine and rain, and you're not supposed to plant your seeds in that soil, because that's not fertile soil. And that's one of the mistakes we make. You know, we have to recognize that all skin folk are not kin folk. This is a reality. In fact, some of the harshest penalties we suffer is at the hands of our own people, unfortunately. This is how far we have moved away from divine laws and principles. And I can clearly remember that, uh, my parents, Lance's parents, and our other our people, they survived um, because they um, had this respect for each other that we have lost. The other yes. thing, too, is that assimilation and integration has been the downfall of Black people. I don't care what nobody say. When you look at our history, and our people couldn't read or write, they built the strongest, most profitable institutions um, that our people have ever built, okay? And the majority of them could not read or write. The other thing too is, <clears throat> is that our people were the number one or was the first commodity traded on Wall Street. <laughs> That's why it's so unfair when these people deny us capital lending because they used our ancestors, I believe it was uh, 100,000 slaves that were first used as collateral in New York in order, um, I don't want to get it wrong here, I have to go back and look at it, but I'm just not going to say which one of the financial institutions, but it was one of the first financial institutions. It may have been um, um, Chase Morgan, or it may have been one of those organizations that was surrounding insurance because Lords of London was created and thrived. Uh, because they had to use the slaves as collateral. So 
you know, all this. Okay, see if we have a little buffering problem. Let me see if Brother oh, okay. Neil is still on. He, yes, he's still on. Yeah. He's you there, brother? Yeah. Did I did I get knocked off? Okay. So um we know that uh to wrap up this uh germination and manifestation. Brother Neil, from my side, I don't I don't hear you, but I see you there. Continue okay. on if you can hear me, but I can't hear you, but I'll be standing by if you can hear me. You see my thumb? Okay, so um, the next uh, divine law we have is uh, the divine law of relativity or testing. Whenever, you know, they like to keep our people in a valley looking up or what they call the crab in the barrel effect. But who put the crabs in the barrel? That's the question to ask, okay? The, the other thing is putting these tremendous mountains in front of us. But the one thing I've learned is that it's not so much as the mountains that man put in front of us, but what the, the divine law of relativity or testing, because we're stronger when we overcome these tests. The principle behind this is nature's karma, as we talked about earlier. Um, the divine law of gestation or divine timing. Um, the principle behind this is that there is a point in time. Let me know if you can hear me, Brother Neil. For everything. I that, see that you're in, but I'm not hearing you. So continue on. Okay. That the divine for law. For some reason, the system here is janky. Of timing, just this. let me know in the chat room if you can hear Brother Neil, and I'll be quiet from this point on. Okay. Um, this divine law on the tree of life, okay, is very important because there is a point in time for everything. Okay, and when the spring equinox comes around, we know that it is an appointed time for us. Okay to move forward in nature, that there are only good things that can come. This is the fertile soil of nature. <clears throat> the law of attraction, positive or negative. And the principle behind this is that your thoughts create your reality. So whatever thoughts you're thinking, that's what you're gonna attract. And finally, the law of vibration, that everything in the universe vibrates. <clears throat> the question is, the principle behind this is, <clears throat> what level are you vibrating at? Are you vibrating high or are you vibrating low? So let's look at uh, the tree of death, which we are currently under. Um, the first thing, that happens is or the law of divine uh the law of the tree of death is division divide and conquer separation and fragmented uh behavior this is why you're taught that pull yourself up by your bootstraps when nobody else is doing that that's what they tell you tell you okay but this is um this is one of the most effective weapons that are used, that is used against our people is division. And they have divided us on so many fronts. Okay, yeah. no, I know. I'm janking. Okay, good, good. I can't hear him from here. So if, when he wants to change the photo, please someone type it in the chat room. Oh, great. And I'll see it. Okay, because it's really bad. I hear buffering in and out. I'm sorry to interrupt you, brother. So continue okay. on, okay. all right? Yeah, okay. Cause, yeah, because, okay, I'm gonna be quiet, but have someone just ask them to type in, to put the next photo and I'll put it in, because okay. I can't hear you. Okay. All right, okay, That's peace. Great. Mm -hmm. um, the, the next weapon that they use in this tree of death is individualism. This is a caterpillar or lower consciousness. Um, the uh, next weapon they use and the tree of death 
is artificial seeds or negative energy. We're in deception, manipulation, where someone can make you believe that they're your friend when in actuality they're not, okay? That they want to be close to you to get information to ultimately help those who hate our people destroy you if you're doing something positive for our people. Um, cheating, deceive, uh, and be number one at all costs. And so this is how they cut our people from the collective consciousness, is that they teach you that you can cheat or do anything to deceive someone as long as you're winning. That's not winning, okay? And like Malcolm said, if you're playing a card game and somebody is winning all the time, they're not winning, they're cheating. That is impossible. That is no, no one or nothing wins 100% of the time all of the time. That is against nature. Um, the other thing is uh, characteristic of the tree of death is corruption. Corruption of principles of delayed gratification, where our people are taught to be very impatient with each other, with life, with a lot of things. This is one of the reasons, the trigger for our people going out and committing violent crimes. Instead of being patient and planning things and working on their purpose, they're told that they have to have these material things to have any kind of standard of success in this evil system, okay? And finally, this tree of death has us under the influence of television, of social media, um, greed, emotional pain and suffering, and low vibratory music and frequency. Um, <clears throat> and these are, you know, these are the characteristics of the tree of death which we currently live under. Um, and that's why it's so important for you to establish um, the values and standards that you live by and stop trying to live up to other people's standards that you're not supposed to because it's based on uh, stolen resources, okay? that you won't get back, okay, but you have to set your own standards, okay? And again, like I said, I learned this from Chinese um, and Latino people. They're very good at this. They establish their own standards. Now, <laughs> not all of them. A lot of them, just like um, these different um, classes of black people are, you know, are aligned with the system. We know this, that's fine. But I'm talking about the fact of the ones, those of us in this feudalistic system that have been put at a certain level, how we must begin now to grow and develop in fertile soil that we plant based on our standard and values. And the way to do that is to look at the makings of you. Who made you? Whose image that you? Who, whose image you were really made in? Okay, and why? Now I want to go into another area. Um, I uh, if somebody can uh, put in the chat room for Brother Lance to put up this picture of Vlad the Impaler. Okay, now I, I have to take a break just real quickly about two minutes to set something no problem take and your time brother right back brother lance i have to set take something time. real quick yeah take your time I, I you know i get that button to push and i keep talking so you come back <laughs> <laughs> okay but if you all right no problem okay yeah i just want to explain to everybody this last week they said three days but i say five days to a week where if you don't know about it because it wasn't happening in america or the united states that there's a underground international 
internet cable in the Red Sea that was slashed. It was cut. I don't know if it was cut all the way or cut on purpose or cut on, cut on by accident. But from what I'm hearing, most of Africa, most of the motherland was without internet service. So that's why you see me on with any shows or anything this past week. Now, I could have made recordings, but as you well know, I'm involved in you know the project here of my home and things are coming along fine. But you know, that's the reason why. It just threw me off a little bit. So I said, well, let me wait until this problem is rectified. But yeah, it was um it was strange to hear because mm-hmm. something so major for me you know, to see something like that. Things like that just don't happen like that. Uh, it was slashed. What is it? Cut near, near the surface underwater and a boat went over it or something, you know, slashed it. You know, but this shows you that again, and I'm going to start stressing it. And I'm one who's always on the internet, you know, creating the content and everything like that and on multiple platforms. But communication between us as a people we should be able to have that without the internet. Okay, email still depends on the internet. Telephone, for lots of people, it depends on the internet. You know, at some point that comes into play. I'm not going to say just put your address up there or okay, your personal information. That. Okay, cool, cool. And I'm, I just want to say I'll talk about that on a, on, on a recording or a different show that I was just speaking about. There's certain okay. concepts. Like that. Yeah, but go ahead, brother. The floor is yours. I'm, I'm here. Okay, so um, All right. yeah, so finally, um, the importance of us s- establishing our own values and our own standards, I cannot um, impress enough. This is extremely important because you're only going to get frustrated, okay, when you compare yourself again to people who have stolen all our resources and have the financial wherewithal to do this, okay? You don't have to do that and teach our children that as long as your purpose is established, the energy is going out where it's supposed to, yes, then we're good. Now, I wanna talk to our people about something. Um, As I said in the beginning, we're gonna talk about vampirism, the legend of Dracul or Dracula, blood on your lips and bite marks on our necks. Okay, so um, yeah, so if you put the picture of Vlad the Impaler back before I get to him. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we're going to talk talk about him. But you have to look at the bloodlines of the deities that you worship. Now, as I said in the beginning, our people have been told about this meek looking, blonde, blue eyed individual that our people are so in love with as the face of Christianity. But see, when you start going back and looking at the history of Christianity, you see, you see the real picture. Okay. Um, And and I'll tell a quick story about Vlad the Impaler, which Dracula is based on uh, Vlad the Impaler and and his father, really, who was a knight of the Order of the Dragons. Okay, we'll talk about that at another time. We all know what the dragon symbolizes. But uh, there's a story about when uh, the uh, Turks, so the the Ottoman Empire and the Hungarian Empire, which the Christians and Vlad <coughs> originated from, they sent the army, okay, up north to fight against uh, Vlad and the Hungarians. But when this army got there, this picture you see, they saw 20,000 of their Uh, men or the Turks who had gone before them that were impaled like this. And according to the story, which is a true story in history, that 
that army was shook at its core that it was so terrifying to see this that they fled this huge army fled and this is where vlad his um reputation grew okay now uh as i said uh vlad the impaler was the son of dracul who was a knight after the order of the dragons. And that Christianity during this time was a military and political juggernaut. It was not this Kumbaya religion that you've been taught here. It was not that. And I don't know why our people refuse to look at truth or look at all sides of something and continue to go down this same road that have manifested nothing but worms for our people, okay? And parasitic behavior. But uh, we know that there is blood on your lips. <laughs> we, we know how many millions of people, the bite marks are still on our necks, okay? They're on the necks of our women, they're on the necks of our men, they're on the necks of our children. Okay, we cannot deny this. There is more blood in the soil of our people around the globe that just cannot be counted. It's an astronomical number. I remember um, reading a book, uh, the historian, uh, anthropologist, uh, uh, Graham Hancock, a European scholar. And, uh, you know, we just have to look at history for what it is, okay? It can't be changed. Again, this is one of the reasons why they use stuff like CRT or, or they're against stuff with, and they put these titles on them to demonize it or woke because they don't want you to really be woke to real history. They want you to continue to go to church on Sunday and Wednesday nights and do this. But the fact of the matter is that the son of the dragon uh, was a defender of Christianity, which was a military and political juggernaut, much like it is today. It's just that you've been fooled to think it's something else because of your relationship with Blackula, okay? So Lance, if you want to put Blackula up, I'll, I'll, I'll get to him. Um, but this is this is the bloodline of your deities right now. Okay, this is what where, where the bloodline came. From. Yeah, now Lance, you remember this movie? Let, let, let me just interject something really quick oh. about this Blackula picture. As a child, I believe his name is William Marshall. Yeah, I spoke with him several times over the phone. As a young child, yes, I had. Yes, I did. Wow. He's a very good friend of my mother. You know, my mother's deceased right now; she's yes. transitioned. But he sung with her in the Hall Johnson Choir. He wow. had different performances locally in smaller plays that she was in, also like kind of in the background. But it was like okay. one big, you know, is an inner circle. And wow. and there were several other people who went on to do bigger things. He's from New York. I'm not sure if he grew up in New York, oh. but. He, he was there. He was there. Okay. You know how some people, you know, they migrate to New York, but I know yeah, he was that's there. True. That's true. And yeah, she's a he was a very good friend of my mother. Oh, and he would talented. call the house. Very talented. There are many people who would call that that had a name for themselves because of the circles that she ran in. But it was the cop, <laughs> you know, they were friends. And oh, he would wow. talk about different things he was doing, as, as well as other people whose names you probably wouldn't know. Like if you say William Marshall. Who's going to think Blackula, you know, or Virginia yeah. Capers is another right. one who you know, had different roles in sitcoms and stuff, but they came up, you know, in the opera and, and the acting. And my mother did more of the opera and the singing that way. But I just wanted to say that. And, you know, when I was really young, my mother was like, well, do you know who you just talked to? And I was like, who is like Blackula? I said, oh, my God. But I, I had already talked to him, picking up the phone with him asking to speak to my mother. You know, he, he knew my father, too. Oh. But but it was my mother that he he knew. And my father knew him through her. Um, wow. But I don't, I don't think I ever met him. But it was just a thing over the phone. So I just wanted to, when you gave me that picture, I said, let me just give that little historic footnote for my life. 
<laughs> wow, that's incredible, uh, Lance. He was a yeah, but go ahead, brother. talented individual, like a lot of our brothers back during that time and sisters. Very, I remember he was very dramatic. Uh, one of my older brothers uh, really liked him. And uh, I remember watching the movie with him. And uh, boy, he brought it. I mean, he, he added uh, Dracula was a little, you know, kind of, he, he didn't have the dramatic personality of William Marshall. And uh, he really brought Black uh, Dracula to life. And and I want to use, we're not talking about William Marshall, the person. We're talking about the character of Black Blackula. Because I, I wanted to use that to highlight something that's very disturbing in our community um, that I, I notice more and more on the Internet, which is the coonery. Okay. And... and it, it's a it's the seeds of self betrayal okay and and when you think about when you think back about all the different color codes that were used um to keep our people you know in this Willie Lynch type situation where we're divided on with everything you know what I mean but at the core of this was the rape the wholesale rape of our women because and an interesting thing, when I came to California, because you know, and I said this to you before, Lance, on the East Coast, the people from Latin America are black as you and me. Exactly. Like the Republic and Puerto Rico and other places. So I thought it was that way everywhere until I got here. And I had to constantly ask the Latino people that I met and knew. Are those Europeans or are those Latinos? So they did a real number in Central America and Mexico. There was wholesale rape here too, brother. Yes. Because uh, it's very hard to distinguish just looking at some of them, whether they're European. And so they do the same thing with them. And this is what I learned that they do, did with our people who were mulattoes and that could, you know, operate on the class because they were the children of the slave owners, right? But I noticed most of them are in the media or, you know, in, in some higher place of authority or the Hispanics, where the ones that we refer to as Latinos, they're pretty much regulated to the same um, quality of life that we are. You know what I'm saying? And I saw this dynamic, um, and I, and I want to say something about that, is that even the ones who are, have the um, tone like our mulatto people, um, a lot of them, um, still, you know, they relate to us. But then there's that class of them that are there, that the Europeans have put there over everybody else like they have done our people. So it's very interesting dynamic. Um, but I, I want to get to uh, this concept of Blackula because now we have real bloodsuckers in our community. And I was mentioning how the only way you're going to elevate in their society is that first you have to uh, downplay who you are, okay? You, you have to pretty much turn. That's why when Dave Chappelle was saying that uh, black folks have to be schizophrenic or two different people, bipolar, because on the one hand, you know, you have to be who you really are when you're not in the positions they put you in to be. Because you won't be there if you can't play that role. But then <clears throat> Blackula takes it a little further because it is the descendant of the bloodline of Dracul. And this energy and this bloodline constantly derades or um, puts our people down all of the time, all day long, 
on social media. This is all you see, this blackula blood sucking of our people from our own people. You look at the black skin, okay? This is a reality we have to live with. So yes, while there are white puppet masters and oppressors pulling the strings mainly through fiat that they give them, it is this class of our people that are keeping their feet or their foot on the necks of black people, this blackular energy. And it is directly from the bloodline of the sons of the dragon, okay? And this is why you see this constant gossip that our people do putting each other down, this constant, constant self-hatred. You see these coons that get on YouTube and on TV and other places that are constantly talking down about our people as if we're the ones that establish these systems of degradation, which we did not. We function in them, but we're not the ones, okay, that um, uh, have the bite marks on the necks of our people and that have sucked the blood from our people economically, socially. We talked about how they took all of our inventions and made billions from and how these plantations um, became wealthy as a result of that. And then finally, our people having to pay them re reparations. But yet you could have somebody, a black person get on national TV who they are elevated in a position, say that black people should not be paid reparations. I wanted to go under a hole when I heard that. I could not believe that could ever come out of the mouth of a black man. <laughs> and so, all of these things, um, when you look at this black spirit um, now, is why we have to go back to nature. We can't continue to worship now. We've gone from the man worship, which we still do in these churches, but now we've gone to the machine worship or the artificial intelligence worship. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't make money from it, I'm not saying that you shouldn't use it to elevate yourself and take advantage of it. <clears throat> Again, we have been taught to see things as either one way. <clears throat> if you don't believe this, if you're not saved, sanctified, and have the Holy Ghost, then you're not a child of the creator creatures. This nonsense that our people continue to live by. We have to embrace nature. This is our only way out because this blackular spirit is going to be the death of our people. And with that, Brother Lance, I'll close. You know why what today is. I have some uh, yes. pre-established pre things going on. And uh, yeah, man, uh, you, uh, you know, that's amazing that you uh, have that connection with William Marshall, a brilliant brother. He, he left. Yeah, it, it was. It was. It's. It's a footnote. You know. I'm not going to say that he took me to the amusement park or we hung out or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I don't stretch the truth, but for you know, for those reasons, through many connections of my mother, there are a lot of little snippets in my life that are very interesting. That I, if I don't say it or document it, and I'm going to be coming out with these things in my writings on the website landscape.com. Okay. Um, it's just interesting. You know, I'll tell you another one real, really quick. Okay. Um, I was at some, it wasn't a political uh, rally or anything. I remember this, and it was very vague for me. I remember this either being in a church or some type of official hall that wasn't that big, but it was definitely back when Shirley Chisholm was running for president. Okay. And my mother was there, she brought me, and there were other people in her inner circle. And like I said, you know, my father was a guy who worked all the time, had his own business, but my mother had the inner circle of all of these people who were involved in the churches up in Harlem, Washington Heights, and beyond in the tri-state area, and really in different parts of the country. The power so behind she the would, throne. Say, say it again? She was the power behind the throne, the energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I would always tag along. I mean, I would always want to come to different things, but I would go okay. between my mother and my father because he's working... And then she's doing these things on the weekend. So I ended up meeting Shirley Chisholm. We didn't take a picture. 
because really and truly back in the early 70s you know what i mean it wasn't oh, even yeah. like i don't even think we had polaroid cameras back then but yeah. but she kissed me on the cheek and i kissed her on the cheek and whatnot and I remember saying, and I hate to say this, I said, Mommy, Shirley Chisholm's breath stunk. I was like, <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> but it oh. wasn't bad. I just, I was a comedian, you know yeah. what I mean? But I met lots of people and a lot of the things were kind of faded. And, you know, because I was always in those circles of, of dignified, progressive black people. That's the bottom yeah. line. That's my yeah. root. And those are my subconscious uh, 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 embeds that are in me. And this is why I have to carry myself a certain way. Yeah, I could talk to stories and talk to craziness that, that I've explored. But the bottom line is, in an unofficial way, I can never say that I had this title, or had, but that was at my root. So speaking with you, brother, you fit along with that, that high vibration, high frequ frequency, uh, dedicated uh, energy. It's a throwback in my life. And we're close in age, but uh, it's a throwback in my life. And it, it's a joy to, to, it's like I've always known you because I've always known your energy. You see yeah. what I mean? So it's yeah. not like I'm new to this and I'm trying to be some prophet and I'm trying to be, this is, this is my root. And thank you for just being who you are. You refer to me a lot in such a positive way, but I can't refer to you enough in a positive way because you're like my lifeblood because there are not too many people out here with your pure spirit and the lineage, and the lineage of a dedicated life to this. There are very few. Um, I know you have to go. I just want to take 90 more seconds. YouTube okay. has become a stage of frauds, a stage of wannabes, a stage of people who have no track record except to regurgitate what they hear from someone else who speaks it like yourself. Not everybody. We have some good people out here. Yeah, but that, that's the thing. Um, I'm not going to waste time competing with these people no. who and, and people say, well, who am I to say who's a fraud? Maybe I'm a fraud. I don't know to them. Right. But I know that I'm not. I'm sincere in, in my connection to the past because that's in my bloodline. That's in my lineage. But I've, I've kind of like let them run their mouths. Let them go. Like you said, this place, this thing of the Internet has become a place where people want fame and fortune. They're not just about doing the work. No, and not. long before the internet came into being, as a child, I saw people show up to meetings, to rallies, to different, even funerals to support and the kind words of support and the sincere, you know, and I, I've yeah. there many times I would be in the room or my room and the phone would ring and my mother would just think like, oh my God, no, it might've been someone who transitioned on and we would gather together and, and get to a person's house or to the apartment um, and, and just that love and connectedness, but this foolishness of wanting to be famous, the foolishness of this one man upmanship, but you talk unity, but you're really about your own pockets. You're really about your own whatever. You know what I mean? It doesn't oh, yeah. make sense to me. Yeah. It, it's getting worse. And that's why more and more, I will go more and more underground to do the real stuff. I won't even be as visible regardless as to what happened with, with, and I will explain that probably sometime this week. It is weird what has happened with me. And it is, it is really weird and strange. If you know the details, you'll really see it. I'm going to tell the truth on it. It is crazy. They wanted me so bad that they did all kind of undercover stuff. And um, it's weird. And I know that they can't stand to see somebody with longevity day in, day out, week in, week out. So let's keep pushing, brother. I appreciate you. You're a throwback in the present, and it reinforces my drive. But these other people who just pick things to do just to get noticed, they, they can miss me with that foolishness. That, that's not what's going to be on this plat platform from now on. Great. Thank you, brother. Thank you so Thank much. You, brother Lance. And everything you said to me is reciprocal. Uh, and uh, I'll just leave you with this, is that you are a shining, bright light to those of us who know you. And I don't Thank care. You. I'm at a stage in my life, I don't care what people think about, as long as the people like you and the people I care about, as long as I have this energy connection with you, I could give two rats ass what people think <laughs> about me because I know they're operating under the tree of death. I know. Yes. Yeah, so that has no effect on 
We're going to continue to put our energy. They can shadow ban you as much as they want. But that land scurve energy is going where it's supposed to go. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank you so, so much. Wow. That's amazing. Yes, and I, I just want to say for those who I, I might want to do that right now because um, after we leave, but I'll cut this show. Okay. For anybody who may who may want to hear me talk a little more, I'll talk for a few minutes after you get off. But Absolutely. you can go to landscurve.com and hit the tab that says conference line. I'm probably going to go on the conference line and talk a little bit there That's and great. go more into detail. To hear what you got to say, man. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And I'll go into detail there because it must be told. I'm holding back a little bit, but tonight I caught the feeling we must tell on, you know, what has happened. So, brother, you have a good rest of your day. I mean, I know it's a lot earlier over there where it, as opposed to me because it's not it's nine oh eight right now. So I know okay. you're on the West Coast, so it's a lot earlier. You're seeing the sun and everything. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> reach out to me sometime this week and I'll tell you some things and some okay. tactics, some some strategies of what I'm going to do. And I know your time is short now, so I'll definitely okay. let you go. But you're always appreciated. Much appreciated. All right, brother. I'll reach out to you this week. Okay. Definitely. Anytime, brother. I'm completely free. Okay. Peace and love, brother Lance. Always, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Yes. But I'm in the mood to talk a little bit. You know, I had the last week off because of this cut cable in C in Africa not getting uh, the internet connection. But again, I can put pen to paper. I can draw a little bit. I can continue the projects and embellish in the home front here, which was very uh, relaxing for me. And um, it gave me a great reset. My enthusiasm is at an all-time high. And the best is yet to come. And I just want to also say that the majority of all of my work that I ever did as far as YouTube and stuff is on SoundCloud, the audio that is. So we have salvaged that. And um, every all the videos are private and Google is playing the game right now with me. So they're not destroyed. But yeah, I'm going to get more into detail with that. And um, if you want to listen to what I have to say, whether it's one person or 50 or 100, you go to landscurve.com right now landscurve.com and as soon as you get there whether you're on the phone or the internet or a computer you'll see in big letters the conference line all you got to do is tap that no matter where you are in the world you don't have to call in they give you the option to call in or just go right on in you can hide the video and leave the audio or mute yourself i'm going to go there right now after these uh little announcements and stuff and like I said, it's all good, and we keep. We're going to continue to move forward, and everything is going to be all right. Okay, peace out, everybody. Landscurve.com, the conference line. After this goes off, I'm going there. For the folks on Instagram, thank you for being here. I'm away from the computer right now, so I'm not ignoring you. I didn't ignore you. Uh, Indigo King, Giant Game, Renee Green, Bella Kofi, and everybody else who was on. I was operating this through the phone, so I didn't want to keep hitting things and take the chance of maybe knocking something off, you know. And I'm in the middle of a quick power outage, a little blink out. It always seems to happen on the good show, this, but it's not going to stop me. Um, there's so much I have to say. Landscurve.com and then the conference line, and I'll be right there. Okay? Peace out, everybody.
Make sure to go to landscurve.com, an online magazine established in 2001, containing written articles, thousands of talk shows and discussions, cutting-edge cartoons, as well as erotic expressions and tasteful adult photography. It's definitely... Make sure to go to landscurve.com, an online magazine established in 2001.